Friday, 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 and yet another Fusion video from JetCAD Cam. If you're new to my channel, I go by Fusion Phil. I make all types of YouTube content based on Autodesk Fusion, or as you may know it, Fusion 360. I'm also a reseller of the software. So we can do everything from training to support the even post-processor edits if you missed my last video on Wednesday about stuff of that nature. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this video. This week, we're gonna go over how to create multiple setups with multiple jigs and fixtures all inside of one file. Now, I get this question a lot once you start to get into the depth of Fusion, and you may wanna run side A, flip it to side B. These are two completely different jigs and fixtures. I'm gonna show you how I always recommend structuring the file. Now, let's get to it. So the first thing I always recommend to anybody and everybody is you wanna pay attention to being organized. The more organized you are inside of Fusion 360, the better your file is always gonna turn out. So as you can see here is I actually have the jig we're gonna use. I'm gonna keep it very simple for you guys. I'm not gonna go crazy in depth on jigs. You can actually build out your template jigs watching some of my other video content, but you can see I have a part and I have one jig. I'm gonna reuse the same jig a couple of times to create a couple of setups. This is where you're gonna see the workflow of rotating that in and out. So the first thing I always tell anybody and everybody, never mess with your original part. If your customer provided you a model or you're working in an assembly, the very first thing I always say is do not actually mess with this file. We're gonna link our part file in. And what I like to do inside of Fusion is I always start with a blank document and I could save this and in the case of this part, I'm gonna go ahead and call it my dummy part machining. And the reason for that is, is I can now associate things in, link them in, link them out kind of scenario, right? So I'm gonna go off the start and you can either bring this directly in as the part you're working on. So we'll give that a second here. It will take a moment to load and snap in. And you have your part now inside the file. Now, the key element here is this is linked, right? I cannot stress this enough. If my customer is still in a research and development phase, maybe they release new revs of something every three to four weeks. If this is linked, I have the ability to go back to that original file, update the original file, automatically push it through into all of my jigs and fixtures. This is why I can't stress enough that it is so important to create that link between your part that you're going to machine and the original customer part. Now, we're gonna do the same thing here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our jig. And as you're gonna see, this is just nothing more than a dovetail vise. There's nothing crazy fancy about it. I'm gonna move it up and out of the way. Now, this is where I am gonna tell you guys we wanna break the link, right? Because I don't want anything to happen to this externally that brings it into the file. So it's a little weird to say, link this, don't link that. All we're doing is we're breaking this link by right-clicking, going down to break link. And what that allows us to do in real time is now go down to our parameter set. And again, I have videos on how to build your own parameter vices, but I can now actually control this in real time. So if that was two by eight by two, again, we don't need both sets of parameters open because I just saved and actually set a favorite for what we need. But as you can see, we now have our setup one jig. Now it's up to you if you guys label these. What I like to do is I like to actually say, this is my setup one. And now we can repeat that one more time, knowing we're gonna go from setup one to setup two. Again, guys, you could tool path this part first. I would highly recommend it. But what it allows you to do is kind of prep one side. So I always like to program my part and get an idea of how I wanna do it, then come back and add my jigs and fixtures for all of my work holding. So again, I'm gonna just bring in the same vise. Maybe you're using a different vise. Maybe your second setup is gonna take a set of soft jaws in order to actually utilize flipping a part over, holding it a different way. Again, all you're really seeing here in my screen is I'm using these as placeholders, as if you were gonna do them with different vices that you built or different fixtures, right? So again, this is now set up to allowing me to distinguish where my part is, and my part is still linked back for changes, as well as my setup one and my setup two that we're gonna use later on the manufacturing side. So now that I have that, again, if we go into our parameters table, and if we're actually doing this correctly, you're gonna notice I have now two sets of parameters all stored up at the top. So I have my initial vice that we created where I set to two, 
And for demonstration purposes, we're going to set the other one to a height of six. And as you can see, I can control anything and everything on either one of these two jigs and fixtures based on how my parameters are set up and being controlled. So again, this is nice to be able to bring it in, adjust each one individually and get everything set up. So let's switch over to the manufacturer side now and let's dive into how we're actually going to utilize all this to again, streamline our setups, make it very easy to understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the manufacturer workspace. As you can see, we haven't made any setups yet here. We can go through and define everything. As some of you are probably questioning, I haven't placed my part or anything as well, but we can jump back and forth between the two to achieve both of those tasks, right? So let's start with creating our setup. As you can see here, I need to define my model. So I could pick this physical body here on my actual display. There's nothing wrong with that. I personally like to go over to the tree here and pull that actual full component level all in one shot. So if there was sketches or something I needed, all that stuff is gonna come through versus grabbing just a body inside of Fusion 360. So as you can see, if I just grab the body, that is the body at the lowest level. So again, this is something that I see people miss out on is they don't grab the whole component, making it almost a little more difficult than it needs to be. Now, our fixture is going to be based on everything that we brought in and modeled, right? Now, this is where some people may get confused. I did a little bit more organization than most, where I left my stock separate from the actual pieces of my vise. And all I'm doing is highlighting the pieces of the vise. If I need a fixture attachment point, I could define that. But I'm gonna jump over to the stock tab because we're gonna start from a solid. And my solid is gonna be this stock right here. So again, at a very, very simple level, I went ahead and defined my first setup. And what you're gonna notice on my screen when I hit OK after my setup is my other fixture completely disappeared. Again, this is a really good tip that a lot of people don't know is down here at the bottom, you have the ability to synchronize views with your active setup as well as the visibility. So based on the visibility of what we have either selected as a fixture, stock, or part, that will automatically populate and come through as well. So we're gonna do this one more time because again, we need two setups for this scenario. Again, I'm gonna grab my model out of my design tree. My fixture is gonna be based on my setup two defined components. So again, we're gonna go through and grab all these. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do in this case is we're gonna actually say this is from proceeding. Again, guys, I don't want you to get caught up on this. If you were making soft jaws for your setup two, there wouldn't be stock, right? We always wanna carry the stock from the first setup into the second setup. You guys are gonna see that kind of in a little more real time as we get everything put together in place. So as you can see here, because we didn't define a stock, nothing has modified. Our stock is still sitting over here in space. But again, the idea is, is when I activate a setup, we're automatically jumping between what we have defined visibly, but also what is in the process of being machined. So now let's go back and let's actually go through and set up this part partially so that we can now see it kind of flip through the process, right? So I'm gonna go back to our actual design side of things. And to make things easy, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a joint between my part. Now I am just gonna define this on a very rough location. It's not a big deal as to where we go off of. Again, you're gonna be much more precise with what you're doing. And what I'm going for here is just laying this flat based on my stock model. And you know what? I might actually use a little different point here to get this squared up a little better. So let's just go off the bottom and we're gonna place this in here sideways. Go ahead and give it a flip. And now you can see I have my part basically center of that rectangle. I know the rectangle isn't the right size, but this is the cool thing about Fusion at the end of the day is I can now go through and define those parameters, right? So I'm gonna go into that parameter. We have two inches tall, eight inches long, maybe it's four inches wide. As you can see in real time, I can update this. We're not self-centering because we went off the side. So again, this is a great thing for you guys to understand how you do that joint to place your part makes all of the difference. So if I go down to my design tree and edit my joint, Let's go ahead and pick and place based off a little different location this time. So we're gonna go top center, and then we're gonna define this again from just a flat face here, go center of that takedown pin. 
And as you can see, we're getting pretty close on center. I might need to bump it up a little bit. Might need to move it over. Lastly, again, we still need to drop our part down into our material. But I think all of you are really starting to see that it's very easy to get your part into place and be able to set things up. So again, we're gonna adjust that material one more time. We're just gonna make it a little bit larger just so my OCD doesn't kick in. And let's just go to a five inch wide block. And as you can see, setup one is all good to go on the backside. Now setup two, we're gonna flip over. You're gonna put this inside of a vise of some sort. Again, maybe it's soft jaws, maybe it's not. For the sake of ease and purpose here, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to do a joint between the top of this center stock and the bottom of this center stock. We're gonna go ahead and flip because we want that mohawk up. And now as you can see, I'm basically sandwiching my part between two vices, right? So again, if I was to modify my stock or change my parameters, again, I'm gonna go through and I'm actually just gonna match these two so that that stock rectangle is identical from A to B. You don't have to do this. And actually, let's go ahead and take that one step back just so visually in the manufacturing side, you guys can see how this is really gonna comply and work with everything we're doing, right? So there, as you can see, my second setup is actually floating much further away. Again, it's automatically gonna activate and synchronize in our design or in our manufacturer workspace. So again, we have a part, we have two completely different setup fixtures inside of Fusion 360. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to manufacturer. And as you can see, it's actually automatically put that part inside the stock. If I go ahead and activate the second setup, you'll notice it snaps all the way around. Again, this is gonna be based off XYZ, how you set up your work offset. We'll fix it so it gets a little cleaner for you guys. But the neat thing is, is that stock, again, still defined because we picked the stock in the first setup for our continuous rest machining. And I'm gonna show that to you with a couple tool paths and why that's important. So let's go back to our setup one. I made the terrible mistake of not actually defining Z, X, and Y. So here's my Z axis up, X is along that actual receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my other setup now. And in this case, maybe we're going to just keep Z again, kind of the same concept, Z axis up. The cool thing is, is with your jigs and fixtures in here, it usually gives you solid square points to work off of as well. So as you can see, we now have setup one and we have setup two. Now my Z is upside down, that's on me. Very easy fix is to click the flip and then we're gonna move it to the stock top and away we go. So again, I'm gonna throw a couple of real quick tool paths at this part. I'm actually gonna go into my templates file and hope that I still have something in here that is gonna allow me to actually very quickly do some tool pathing on here. It's been a minute since I've had to come in here. We do, we have a three axis mill rough. Perfect. Went ahead and faced off the top of that part. We're gonna go ahead and machine around the outside with a roughing cycle. And then we're gonna finish that up with a very terrible 3D contour, but I think you guys are getting the point and seeing that the stock is now being machined away as we work through that part. Now, again, in our second setup, the continuous rest machining is your best friend. So when we go ahead and activate that and flip over, what you're gonna notice is notice how that hat is still there on the part, and I still actually have that stock model coming through. Again, based on what I'm doing is I'm using some placeholders to show you that at the design level, guys, I went ahead and linked my part so I could always get the latest version of my part if something was to change. And then I brought in a couple of different fixtures to be able to use. Again, these are just parameter vices that I built inside of Fusion 360. I broke those links because I don't want that to go back and forth. And what that allows me to do with things like syncing my setups inside of Fusion, and let's go ahead and steal this toolpath. I'm just gonna do a real quick copy and paste. And we're gonna find out that I don't have multiple depths on in my template, which would be a very smart precautionary thing. But as you see here in real time, I am now being able to jump between setup one, setup two, three, four, five, it doesn't matter, pulling the latest and greatest stock constantly through, as well as synchronizing to my different setups as we go. Now, another little tip down here on this toolbar, I know I guys showed you guys how to do the synchronization moves, but you also have the ability to turn on your actual in-process stock, turn it off, things of that nature. 
It is the hot key of F8. So if I was working on a part and I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing and I want to get that model out of the way, I can easily toggle it on and off. Same thing goes with transparent stock, things of that nature. So if you don't like transparent stock, as you can see here is the solid shape versus turning it off and setting up transparent. So I know this video is quick, guys. I'm fighting some allergies and a cold because my kids always get me sick when I'm at home. That being said, I do want to say, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. We're closing in on that thousand subscriber mark. I do want to put it out there to you guys as I have joked about it, but I think it's becoming real that we should do a giveaway for a thousand subscribers on this channel. And if you guys want to comment down below what sh we should give away, a couple of people have kicked around the idea of maybe a seat of Fusion 360, and that's a full commercial seat. Maybe a laptop for some of you out there that are in need of a newer computer. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's just one of my awesome JIT CAD CAM polos. I would prefer that being the one that has to pay for it. But again, if you guys please like, comment, subscribe, if you're finding this useful in your day-to-day -day workflow, as always, have a great rest of your day.